Hello, welcome to the patch. This week, brought to you by NatureBox. That was a long. There it is. Over there. It's a good little nature. <laughs> there it is. Nice. Ah. Ah. good snacks. Uh, I'll wait with you. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Gus. Jeremy. Ryan. And Gus. So I feel like a bit of a liar. Oh, yeah, I got that. Flip. I remembered for once. You um, feel like a bit of a liar. Now? What an entrance. I'm, I'm on I, a video game podcast, but I haven't played video games. I think in about two weeks now. Well, you've been Except in Australia. For Neko Atsume. I, 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 and Neko Atsume is not a video game. Yeah, it is. It's it's a cry for help. Let's it's be honest. Cry. It's in the game section of the app store. <laughs> well, then there you go. That makes it a game. Well, it's not like you missed a whole lot in the past two weeks. That's really, true. Gaming wise, oh. I've been play, but I've been playing catch up. Is uh, right. not catch up, but uh, catch up. In fact, I was uh, right before we came here. I'm lit. I. I I am in the process of finishing Tales from the Borderlands. I am in the final nice. <laughs> cinematic, but I was like, I don't have any time to finish watching this. So I had to run over here <laughs> and, uh, and jump up on set. So that's that's the most gaming I've I done. Still have not played the fifth episode of that. It's, I'm in the same boat. Just I have it almost done, but I just never sit down and do it. It's really good. Well, what I what I do is what I talked about forever. I finally just started. I waited till it was all done, and finally just like now well, there's like a bit of a drought in gaming right now. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna play through that. Then I'm gonna go. Then I'm gonna play through Game of Thrones. Then uh, hopefully Minecraft story mode. Nice. That's that's my current plan. Oh, and then of course the Division beta coming out tomorrow. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, I, I think uh, I'm not sure if it's coming out tomorrow, but I, it, it is coming out here. Yeah, this I, week. I think the 28th for Xbox One, and yeah. then the 29th is where it starts on PS4. That's tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just jumped a date line, so my my relative time of, is is really uh, <laughs> is off. So I mean, that, I, I have to admit, I don't normally with now with digital delivery, I don't normally pre-order stuff anymore. Yeah, they totally suckered me with this beta access. <laughs> I heard you could go to the website and still get into the beta. Motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna find out right now. I'm gonna try. Uh, I did it for nothing then. Yeah, I think you did do it for nothing. Fucking jackasses. How many players is the division? Is it like a certain it's a, amount? It's of... sort of MMO style, so it's going to have sectors. Yeah, I don't um, really know yet. That's, only, that's yeah. one of the yeah, reasons. Like, like, I've, I've had so many questions about this game for so long. I think I'm going to like it. <laughs> so, the, I, I, yeah, they, they, they got me. Why, why, why did I pre order well, that? I don't know. Knowing. Why are you looking I at mean, me like I'm, <laughs> I wasn't did, there? That was something they said was pre order now to get into the beta. They didn't say that was the only one oh. in the beta. <laughs> Uh, pre-order now to get the game. Oh, well, I got a pre-order. Okay, How else I, am I going to get it? That may not be true, but that's what I've heard <laughs> is if you go to the... All right, let me see. How to play the beta. Uh, first, you enter your birth date. All right, good. Make sure you're old enough. Do, do, do. There it is. So I think today I'm going to be born on May 4th. What? Not January 1st? Uh, well, it doesn't... It, January 1st used to be easy because that was just there already, but this one it's making me so uh, lucky. You're seeing this. You know what the first thing that comes to mind is? The Last of Us. That oh, okay. multiplayer, wow. like that mm -hmm. third-person so multiplayer. The farthest back you can go to his date is nineteen or 1896. Okay, so, so if there's, just in case. May 4th, 1896. If there's any 121-year-olds who want to play the game, you're <laughs> fucked. Play solo or co-op. Uh, embark on missions, enter Dark Zone. <laughs> so, in case there are any Tom Clancy fans before there were airplanes. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it is... It, I'm not going to watch the video. It's like, how to play the beta. It's a video. Oh, yeah. come on. So you'd think it would just be like a news post, like, uh... Here's what you do. Hang on, I found a flag. Uh, by the way, I had the best intentions of going to Australia and playing a lot of, uh, finishing off Shadowrun, finishing, I was going to play the entire, uh, Back to the Future, uh, Telltale series. Mm-hmm. Didn't really do any of that. Did you play any? So we talked about this on Australia. We talked yeah. about how you downloaded all these games with the intention of playing it. Mm -hmm. And at the time, you hadn't played anything. Did you end up playing anything at all? I played like halfway through episode one of Back to the Future, and I played like 20 more minutes of Shadowrun. I Oof. just, like, I get on Wh the plane. Which it's like, one? Shadowrun Returns? Yes. Okay. Uh, I get on the plane, and I'm like, check out the kind of the, you know, every plane's slightly different with the tray table situation. Yep. But I've never yet seen one that I was like, a 15-inch laptop won't crush this or bother everyone on both sides of me. It's just from, you just set it down once, though. I know. It's just it's like or just put it on your lap. Your lap can support like whatever you want. It doesn't. It's it's claustrophobic, <laughs> right? It's just not a good situation. No one wants to do that. Okay. All right. Fair enough. No Ryan wants to do that. No Ryan wants to do that. If you had the kind that like came out from the armrest, you might be able to set it on that. But the kind that falls down from the Chair in front of you, yeah, you would you would destroy that. Actually, the the fold out from the armrest looked worse. Oh, really? Because that's we we had a bulkhead seat on the way there, and uh, it uh, 
it was so flimsy and just like, mm. I mean, laptops are is you know ones that are, that'll run a game or in front of you. Yeah, eh, I mean, fuck them. But, All right, well, fair enough. Uh, but laptops that are designed for gaming aren't usually the lightest thing yeah. in the world. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you don't want to just crush it. Well, they'll drop it from a foot I mean, in the air when like you go play. But yeah, if there's turbulence, like yeah. it'll go up <laughs> yeah. and just fucking slam a hole through the fuselage of the plane. I mean, credit to. American Airlines and I guess Qantas, the movie selection was such that I didn't really have a lot of downtime. Like I could oh, just nice. flip through movies. I think I watched like twelve movies. Damn. Over the course of those two flights. I watched maybe all, more. All of season one of House of Cards. <laughs> 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 which uh, which I kind of fucked up on. I watched ten episodes and I was like, man, I was like, this this series, this season just kind of Ended in the middle. I feel like everything's unresolved. You then I realized, oh, there's three more episodes. Like, I, I didn't scroll down. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, there's three more. I was like, that makes a lot of sense. I thought you were going to say that the season ended, like, you were in season two and didn't know it yet. <laughs> no, no, God, no. You know, that happened to me when, uh, when Arrested Development came back uh, via Netflix. I was like, oh, sweet, new Arrested Development. So I went to hit play, and it, was, and it just started playing. I was like, oh, okay, cool. I was like, Wow. It's like it looks the same. They they just pick you know they just continue without a, without skipping a beat, and Netflix started playing from the last episode I've been watching previously. So it's like in the middle of season two. Oh, nice. And it's like oh, I just, I just didn't remember. I'm an, I'm an idiot when it comes to that stuff. I don't want to watch the video. Well, about you're how still on that right now. Uh, you know, it's well, I stopped for a minute to complain about how I'm a shitty gamer, and then oh god. Well, people are saying okay, so I, th I thought you yeah. had given up on that. So people are saying, from what I can tell on Twitter, uh. JOK1992 says some Xbox Reward members get beta codes. Oh. And who is this? Schwartz and Nicker? Nick Schwartz? Oh, it's Nick. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, you apply to be in the beta. You could just yell. You request, he requested and got accepted last week. Okay, so you I can't was like, just apply. I was, like, I was like, Nick Schwartz? Wait, this guy's on the pa Wait, That's Nick. <laughs> <laughs> So you can apply, but you're not guaranteed. Yeah, Pre-order, so, okay. you're guaranteed. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, right. I mean, that's what they always end up doing, right? It's like yeah. they, they'll go for like a day, and they're like, okay, everyone who applied gets in. Right. Because ultimately, they want to stress test it. So they're going to push for pre-orders initially, and then they realize, okay, that's it. We pretty much have milked that oh, man. dry. That's the right way to do it. It is the 29th, though. Uh, though it seems like that's for Xbox One gets 24 hours of early access. Is that that's, that's what it's come to? <laughs> Apparently, that's what it's come to. Well, I mean... That's kind of the first time I remember some, you know, Xbox winning that race recently. Like PS4 has been crushing it with the Yeah, no, it's ours first. It's yeah, ours first. it's true. Yeah, then Battlefront and Destiny. Um, yeah, I think this this is the first time I've seen that. And I think from what I can remember, I think all the marketing materials I've seen for the division have been like Xbox One focus, like Xbox One jewel cases and uh, Xbox One spinny logo things. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that thing. Whoa. So what's got you excited for the division though? Like, what have you seen about it that makes you want to play it? It just seems like something I like. I, I, I like the premise. It makes me think of a more. It's not first person, but it makes me makes me think of XCOM. But even though it's not term, and there's no, I know there's wow, no, wow, what a, there's no I similarity, mean, but it makes me think about it. Just like the way that squads work together, and uh -huh. and I like the idea of random PvP against other people, even though I suck and I'm terrible. Uh -huh. uh, and we'll see. And they haven't really expanded. When they first announced the game, they they had some of those things that they talked about, like weird asymmetrical gameplay where maybe you could play on an iPad if you were in front of your... Right. Yeah, but they haven't mentioned that. They went real quiet at on all. that. all, right. So they went quiet on everything. I know nothing about this game, like at all. About when you're saying two squads, when yeah. two squads can meet each other, like can your squad do like a PvE thing? Like, right, like, like in the middle of a PvE kind of thing, here. you could encounter a PvP kind of, situation. Right. Oh, wow. The, I think, I guess it apparently was Funhouse that was drawing the comparison to Destiny, but it seems like pretty accurate. Uh so far because it could be if you imagine being in one of those public zones at destiny same thing where you you and your friends could be doing something and run into an entirely unrelated group of people the difference being can you fight this other squad because in destiny you can't just then fight them uh yes. it Here, seems like it seems like yeah from what we've seen in the trailers there have been situations where that can happen and there have been situations where you can essentially screw your own squad over yeah <laughs> Like you can just it's double like, agent. Well, we just finished the mission. Well, I could uh, we could just all say good job, or I could kill you all and take everything. So I'll never be on the squad with you, Ryan, because <laughs> that's a path you would take, and I know it. Oh, uh, if I thought I could win, sure. You just gotta make sure that I don't think I can win. <laughs> never, never. Just always make sure you have the higher ground wherever yeah, Ryan yeah. is. Just be just like a little higher, and just constantly say like, "I right. have the higher ground." Ryan, yeah. you go in front. You just go ahead. <laughs> I'll follow. Well, see, I, like I feel like I'm now set up for that because now you guys are all gonna turn on me. Mm, I mean, 
we all know that we're not as good in games. You really think what Jeff is going to be like, I could take him. That'll never happen. He would, okay, but Jeff would work the crowd. <laughs> You work by the being crowd? like, yeah, no, Jeff would be uh, maybe Jeff wouldn't by himself decide to do it, but Jeff would be like, everybody get him. Oh, he'd instigate oh, it. Yeah, I see. yeah, that's that's fair enough. We did just play Trouble in Terrace Town. And it was a lot like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People instigating things. So uh, on, on Twitter here, according to Goodbye Megaton, uh, he said, <laughs> "I wonder what choice name. he I made." Like that, like that. Uh, <laughs> he said the iPad drone thing was scrapped. I don't have any uh, confirmation on that, but uh, that's, if that would explain why they stopped talking. Yeah, if about you it. believe Goodbye Megaton, that, I mean, is, that is it. This that's, is another huge example of one of those games that, from concept, you know, showed at like E3 two years ago, to what is going to be delivered is like. I mean, that's probably maybe why you don't think you know anything about it is because what they it's used to show. All different. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's amazing the difference in what was shown early on, which was supposedly gameplay. I mean, it was you know the mm -hmm. that whole thing. This was the one where it's like the guy and is like, look, he closes the door. Right. That was somehow a big thing. It's like he's next taking cover next to the car, like closes the car door, moves over a little bit, got some cover, and then like his friend flies in as a drone. He's like flying around. It was and that's really an iPad cool. character. Uh, all of that is gone. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking here. It was actually announced at E3 2013. Uh, during E3 2015, the, ga the game's final release date and PvP mode called Dark Zones were announced. Its companion app was canceled, uh, and the company considered that the addition of drone would bring unfairness to competitive multiplayer mode of the game. Bullshit. <laughs> That's right? That's horseshit, right? Well, you could. Yeah. I mean, it seems I mean, like you could do something like not have the drones in PvP yep. and restrict them to like PvE or something like that. It'd be really cool. The last time I got disappointed about a mobile thing was a uh, watchdog said they were going to have of like someone could control the city. Like, oh, I need to get in here. You can do that. But did that ever really did people use that at all? No. Like it did, I heard it about it and I was like, "Well, it's awesome." Work. Yeah. But that was one of the I think it was like a competitive multiplayer mode um that you could have that ha someone hack in. You know, that was that game was all about being hacked. Mm -hmm. Um and I think that did exist. We yeah, just never I got them it to saying, work. Like showing someone like driving in the game, being like, "I need this gate open," yeah. and someone to open it on the thing, mm -hmm. which was awesome. But then I never saw anything with it. It didn't work that well. Yeah, we well, worry about that. I mean, I think when and, and there's a lot of times that when you see companion apps, like there's a lot of latency and it doesn't work for things that are fast paced like that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there are. Well, you say that, but uh, supposedly the Pip Boy app for Fallout that, works. That was, that was what I was gonna say. But mm -hmm. again, that's not normally something you would use in a fast-paced situation. Like if you're doing it, you can look away, and mm -hmm. you still have to look away and look at you know something. But yeah, it was a lot more responsive. Yeah. But I don't. I still don't know how responsive it would be like in a combat type situation. I wasn't using it to change weapons. It, it like worked bats. pretty well actually. I actually handed the Pip Boy app um, to Cat, and she was using it. And while I was fighting, and I'd be like, oh, I need the rocket launcher. And she'd like quickly flip over there while I was fighting, and I'd pull it out. And it was actually really good. <laughs> yeah, but you got to have like a level of trust. In yeah, there and I'd be like, stand back, stand back. And she'd like heal me like while I was doing it. It was great. But uh, it did work. It was very responsive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I liked that thing. Yeah. It was, it was a, it's a cool idea. And I, I still don't know that we're, we're at a point where you can find a compelling reason to pick up like an iPad or second a second screen. yeah, second screen in a video game. Because still, ultimately, if it's one person doing it, you're still diverting your attention from like your main screen to your other screen. Yeah. <laughs> How long before we get like the Mad Cat's accessory that'll just hold your iPad on top of your controller? Or just like a headband that you strap your iPad to, <laughs> like out in front of your face, <laughs> so you're like looking around it, and it's just like, I'm playing a game. <laughs> There's some games I think could benefit from it, like uh, Rainbow Six, I think. Like, imagine really? if you had some map that like, had a radar so you could see people around you, but only if you looked at the thing. So, well, they, they've got the, the heartbeat sensor in the game. Right, which is but actually, you gotta like hold the thing up and yeah. look around. But if you had like some pulse come out of you, and if you look down, you like walk through a hallway and see pulses around you. Like, it'd be cool. It'd be cool, especially if you get one of the, like strap it to your forearm like they have in oh, the yeah. game. Oh yeah. The the, doo -doo -doo -doo. That'd be uh, badass. You gotta think I'd about it. it. Like Companies. aliens? Aliens could do it. Aliens. They had, you know, the same kind of thing, like, you're talking oh. about, or like a little radar. That would be cool to have an Aliens game with, like, a, a second screen. What's the uh, arc? Doesn't arc you have, like, a gym? You do have a gym. Arm. That's your, like, your inventory and shit. Oh, that one really work with a phone. <laughs> well, I mean, that's Pip-Boy, basically. That's also you how know you what? You make a good point. Yeah. You make a great point. <laughs> it, is, it is exactly the Pip-Boy, now that I think about it. It's, it's inventory management. It's uh, where you level up your stats. Uh, it's the map. So Except you can't take it off. Oh, you can't rip it's it It's sort out. of implanted, yeah. yeah. 
da uh, on Twitter, Daniel M. Wheeler one is asking where your Diet Coke is. He obviously does not see it. It's right next to you. Yeah. It's always there. Also empty. It's Yeah, it's gone. When we, uh, <laughs> when we were at uh, RTX Australia over the weekend, I heard on uh, Saturday, Saturday was the first day we got there, Jeff and Millie had a bet. I don't know if they ever told you about it. You walked into the room. They did, yeah. And Millie walked up to Jeff and said, I'll bet you that Ryan grabs a Coke within 10 minutes of being in this room, of walking into this room. <laughs> Here's, well, yeah, no, Millie bet that I wouldn't within 10 minutes. Oh, I thought she bet. That, oh, that's right. She, she was wouldn't, yeah. She actually lost? I just didn't tell Jeff. Oh, they were watching you. I, didn't, I don't think they had She seen missed it, it. I oh. one right as it came in. Uh, and, I, yeah, Millie came over. She's like, hey, you won me 10 bucks. I was like, oh, sure, I kid. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> and I know he doesn't watch the patch, so we're good. This information will never get back to him via someone on Twitter. Don't do it. It's ten bucks. No, it's five bucks. And it's also Australian. Five money. bucks Australian. She won twenty five cents. Let her have it. All right. <laughs> they found that funny. Random <laughs> laughter. Like the monitor started from, from cutting the out. Room. Yeah. Um, no, don't worry about that. They, they don't see that. That's just oh, for okay. Us. Good. Um, so what else? So the, what am I? I'm trying to think about what I'm excited about. I'm gonna wrap up. Like I said, I'm gonna wrap up Tales from the Borderlands. Hopefully mm -hmm. in the next. 45 minutes. <laughs> um, then Did you like it so far? Yeah, it's really great. I mean, I've had a blast the whole time. Uh, when I left to go down to Australia, I was about 15, 20 minutes from the end. So I just started playing it right now. And now I'm like literally right at the, at the, uh -huh. at the final cutscene. You saw his patch time, you're like, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> God, God, I, got it. I was like standing up, walking to the door, like, come on, come on. No, I'm not finished. <laughs> Uh, but then I'm gonna go back to Tales from the Borderlands. And did Minecraft story mode ever conclude? Is the is that done? I think they've only put episode one, maybe two out. Two is no, definitely out. Two yeah. is definitely out. Yeah. Um, it didn't. There wasn't great reception with episode one, uh, especially the the let's watch we did. People were like, people weren't happy. Why the hell? I mean, but you also replaced regular Minecraft with it. People didn't like that. I mean, it's Minecraft. That's it's good enough, it's right? It's Minecraft E. It's in the same world. So I'm looking it up. Uh, episodes, the first four episodes are out, and wow. episode five is due out March 4th. Okay. So that's probably wow. That, that's pretty a quick. Really fast turnaround for Telltale. Well, it was really fast at first, and now we've entered the Telltale delay. It was October 13th, October 27th, November 24th, December 22nd, March 4th. They did all a right. lot in that last episode. Yeah, so packed it all in there. They, uh, they, I'm sure they started with the best of intentions, and then it mm -hmm. just crept up. Because at first it was what, like two week delay between them. Then it was a month, a month, and then two and a half months. Are people people happier people with it? Or? <laughs> I, I, I think I've read you know relatively decent reviews for it. I mean, it hasn't been great. I'm looking at the Metacritic right now, and mm -hmm. uh, oops, oops, the Metacritic is ranges. Episode two did not get good reviews, but episodes one, three, and four are decent. Seven, Seventy ish. Hmm. 70, right. 73, somewhere in that in that neighborhood for the PC version. But I will say, okay, so speaking of Telltale, uh -oh. one thing I am not happy about in, in playing Tales from the Borderlands is this engine that they're still using. Dude, that's what they uh, got. Yeah, it's like... You're talking about when it cuts so, and they're or, like or, frozen or it something, It freezes, right? yeah, yeah. Like uh, during the end of Tales from the Borderlands, there's like a big climactic battle and you have to like do some quick time actions, like move mm -hmm. the stick or hit buttons and it's like... You know, everything's just kind of frozen, and then it just pops in, like, oh, shit! And then you got to get yeah. even less time to hit them. Uh, I feel like they really need to to get that sorted out. Yeah, they invested... I wonder where they even came... I, I assume they built it, but, uh, you know, they, it feels like they invested some money in building an engine and then just made that everything. Mm -hmm. And they didn't bother to customize it. Or, yeah, and this was the Xbox One version I was playing. I don't know yeah. if it's, you know, smoother on PC or PlayStation. Uh, no I mean, I assume they're using the same thing for Back to the Future, and so far it runs fine, but... Uh, I will say that one of the things, and I've, I just recently upgraded uh, to an SSD for gaming, uh, as well as I mean, I, I run my still run my operating system off of an old school hard drive, but uh, it's real hard to go back now. Really, if you can afford it, because the the prices on SSDs have come down a lot. If you can get just drop fifty bucks and get a two hundred forty gig SSD hard drive, I, I what originally pushed me to do it was Fallout Four. Because I, you go in and out of areas so much, and there's so many of those like little micro weights. Yeah, and I was just sick of it. I was done with it. And you look online, and it's really hard to find good statistics, some good benchmarks to say practically, if I do this, if I put an SSD in my machine and run games off of it, what's it going to do for me? In and again, it's kind of a thing that's hard to measure because it's dependent on so many other factors. Do it. 
Absolutely do. How, how big of an SSD did you say you got? I think I just picked up a 240. A 240? And yeah. do you remember how much you paid for it? Uh, I don't. I think it's like, it was, I found one on sales, like 50 to 80. Yeah, I see one here. I'm looking uh, on a website. Uh, there's a 240 gig. It's a Kingston for 77 bucks. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's, you think that it is a very small drive in, in, regard, in comparison to like what m mainstream hard drives are at nowadays, but for just putting games on it, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really shocked. I haven't really looked at the pricing in a while, and I know that they were expensive for so long, but, I mean, it seems like you get a decent-sized one for, I mean, not too much money in the grand scheme of things, and as long as you're diligent about where your installs are and yeah. you just keep the games that you're actively playing on there and just do some management, it'll probably be okay with a smaller drive. Also, an important thing to, with that is that Steam used to be kind of uh, locked down as to where you could install your games. Like, your games library was in the one place on your C drive. That's it. You can now create a second library. Oh. So I've got a library that still exists on my C drive and a library that's on my SSD. So you only put games you're currently playing on that. And... Right. Uh, unfortunately, there is like a someone made like their own Steam game transfer tool, but if you wanted to say take one from this hard drive and move it to that hard drive, there's not like a way built into Steam that's easy to do it. Oh, you basically sucks. just have to do the backup and restore okay. to move it over. Which isn't, I mean, that's still not as bad as downloading the whole thing, typically. It's not, yeah. And you, I've not, not tried to just dirty copy it over. It might even work dirty there. Dirty copy. Uh, you just grab it and drag it. Um, but, yeah, for everything since then I've installed it, even things like XCOM, uh, any time that you have that loading screen, it goes away. So XCOM, if I'm going to a mission, that time you used to spend in the dropship, mm -mm. it's like the animation finishes and you're out the door. So, I can't go back. I don't think it's hard, especially You've going heard back. Heard it from Ryan. He's addicted now. I'm a different man He's now. Old. I've been changed. It's touched me in a lot of ways. Uh, well, we're going to see <laughs> yeah, a nicer, right. a kinder, gentler side of uh, of Ryan now. No, now I'm all about efficiency. Now I'm fast. I'm lean. No facial hair. I mean, sort of. Yeah, yeah. No, this was my. This is what I do every time I get back from a trip because it's just like I got to get all the airport off me. Mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't blame you. That's such a long fucking trip. It's unbelievable how loopy and crazy you can be by the end of it. <laughs> I, I was I, 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 I was here. <laughs> yeah. I said last night when I got back to Austin, I wanted to figure out a way to shower, sleep, and eat a cheeseburger all at the same time. Yeah, I was like, that all sounds like the best three can, things in the world. You can do that. <laughs> yeah, but it's hard to do it without suffocating or getting your cheeseburger soggy. Yeah, you sleep in a tub, blender, funnel, cheeseburger. And then pass out. Yeah, but you gotta, you gotta worry just, about it. will just feed in there. The blender in the shower? This sounds like. <laughs> oh, that's a little dangerous. Yeah, it sounds yeah, like I mean, a step away from suicide. <laughs> well, I mean, you pre blend it. Yeah, you don't oh, have you to keep the blender it. going, right? Yeah, and then you just pack it in the funnel. It will yeah. slowly come out. And then you just I'm gonna go down to McDonald's and be like, can I help you, sir? I want a Big Mac, but I want you to stick it in the blender first. <laughs> yeah, pre blend it. They have a McFlurry machine. They'll do the same yeah. thing. Give it to me in a, in a fucking cup with a giant, like, bubble tea straw. <laughs> I'll take a Big Mac and a medium-sized cup, please. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> uh, here, let me uh, let me read this thing. Yeah. Uh, I want to remind everyone this episode of The Patch is brought to you by NatureBox, the triple A of snacks. When hunger strikes, don't eat that half-eaten bag of chips between the couch cushions that taste like salt and sadness. We've all been there. <laughs> Be prepared with smart, delicious snacks from NatureBox. All of NatureBox's snacks are made with high-quality ingredients you can trust. Trying to eat healthier doesn't mean giving up on flavor and eating snacks that taste like twigs and dirt. Choose from over 100 unique and tasty options like sriracha roasted cashews and mini Belgian waffles, or fill out your snack profile and get personalized recommendations based on your preferences. Best part is, NatureBox delivers right to your door. Spend more time getting to the next game and less time searching through couch cushions. Fuel your game engine with healthy snacks for once. Visit naturebox.com slash the patch. Get 50% off your first box now. It's naturebox.com slash the patch right now to slay your hunger dragon with the sword of nutrition. <laughs> Don't laugh. Uh, that's naturebox.com slash the patch. Go there, get 50% off your first box of delicious personalized snacks sent directly to your doorstep by the wizard of nutrition. There you go. That was me. Nice. I made that slay one the, Slay the hunger dragon. It sounds like you need an SSD and nature box and you're good to go. Yeah, please. A sister. Um, so I, I haven't been reading. I haven't been keeping up with the news today. I wasn't. There is. I, I, I haven't, I've been. But there are, there are a couple of things <laughs> yeah. that, that I've seen headlines for that I wanted to ask you guys about. Uh, one of which was, I guess EA is changing the way that they're attending E3. Yeah. 
So they're pulling their booth from the floor. So no booth. Are they just doing like an outside activation at a theater or something? They said they're doing their own event. Well, right? they're, they're, as part of E, they're still going to do a uh, what do they call them? Like a presser as part of E3. So you know when everybody has their individual game announcements and trailers and releases, they're still going to do that. Uh, which I those are usually affiliated with E3, right? Like E3 provides the venue and then they come and talk. I don't know how that works. It's never like those pressers are never at. E3. Right. They're always, they're always, off always at, at the another main theater. Floor. Right. No, they're at like a theater, like nowhere near oh, okay. the venue, typically. So maybe uh, they're not related. Right. So, I mean, I think maybe the, the, you know, the big publishers just do those to then promote what they're going to be doing at the show. I don't know. And it's coincidental. Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, you got all the people there, so right. that's the time to do it instead of doing it when you are just drawing by yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. Fair. So what's this EA Play thing they're talking about? Now, they are going to, it sounds like they are going to do their own event, kind of similar to what, like, Valve has done. Uh yeah, it, for, I, I just pulled up the story on it here. So apparently they're skipping the booth, like you said. They're going to hold an event called EA Play from June 12th to 4th at Club Nokia in Los Angeles. Uh, and they also plan to hold a one-day event June 12th at the Mermaid Event Center in London. London, i got to talk with you for a second. Why the fuck did you call something a Mermaid Event Center? If there are not real mermaids in there, I'm going to be fucking pissed off. <laughs> well, you can have the Dragon Center, right? <laughs> Mermaid, of, cool. the Mermaid <laughs> Event Center. <laughs> is, it, is it like half on land, half in the water? Oh, that'd be cool. The mer- As most mermaids are, right. they are half on land well, you know, and half in the water. That's, that's how they do the reveal. You know, they're like, oh, naked lady, oh, fish parts. And then they sing yeah. and the boats crash into the rocks. The mermaid. That's it. I wonder how much that's, uh, that's the sirens. You're very that's close, though. <laughs> <laughs> the first one I looked up is some like shitty looking restaurant in, in uh, Minneapolis. I was like, this doesn't look right. Uh, mermaid event space, London conference exhibition, and it's not loading because our internet so sucks. So w- this EA Play thing, mm-hmm. it's not affiliated with E3. No, it's, it's just I don't their think so. thing. Uh, it seems to be going on at the same time. That's about it. I mean, if you think about it, though, like the same kind of thing issue we have with RTXs and, and doing like signings has got to apply to these booths. Like, there's only so many people that you can interact with, and it turns out it's usually a very small percentage of the people there. Uh, just by time. There isn't enough time, there isn't enough space to see all the people there. On the At your booth, what are they doing? Are they, I mean, they're probably not selling merch for EA, right? Right, it's promoming upcoming games, yeah, essentially. Yeah, they just have, have gaming shirt. stations where you can go play new stuff. So, if they don't... I'm sure they've got you know the usual bevy of uh, sports games coming out. Um, but... <laughs> Yeah, people love them. Year? People yep, love those. I mean, they do, but every year, well, what if they sell? Why not? Well, this has got to be the time when they announce things that are coming out relatively soon. Like we're we're through part of the cycle where I think everyone was excited about games like Battlefronts out. Yeah, uh, and uh, Mirror's Edge will be out soon, right? That's like in March, I think. It is. I believe you're correct. So I mean, I think two, yeah. we'll we'll find out what Dice is working on next, <laughs> as part of the the EA press conference. Yeah, but that's all the presser. So it's the booth is really kind of so. What what's the point anymore? They they, they will yeah. have hands on with stuff. So I mean, normally they'll announce something that's years out before they have anything to show for it. Then as the, it gets closer, they'll keep announcing things that are further out. But the stuff that gets closer to release, they'll have something hands on. Yeah, and that's what they'll do. I feel like there was two games that were mentioned in that article there was like a star wars one like they're working on something else what some other star wars one by visceral oh i think visceral is working on uh that oh and yeah and then mass effect andromeda yeah that was it uh so so yeah that's not confirmed but that's just speculation that oh it's speculation yeah what they'll talk about is mass effect andromeda and that visceral developed star wars game i'm excited to see a visceral developed star wars game um by the way mirror's edge is coming out february 23rd Hmm. Oh, that soon. Oh, sorry, that's Australia. February 26th. Did they get it first? That far away. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I'm just, that's what (laughs) seems to be indicated, right? We get it last. It's like Australia, the 23rd. Europe at 25th. Europe 25th, and then everybody, I guess, the 26th. Yeah, it doesn't have any country next to that one. It's just our continent or whatever. The rest of (laughs) y'all. Yeah, everyone else, you can have it, (laughs) I guess. Uh, okay, so I mean that, that's interesting. I think maybe that, from my speculation, the only thing the, um, again, it's just purely speculation. The only thing I can speculate is that EA was envious of how much attention Bethesda got mm. for their uh, for their presser at E3 this last year. So Bethesda, though, like, I don't, yeah, I guess you know Bethesda did have a well, full presence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, all right, <laughs> listen, Bethesda has a lot of dedicated fans. EA has a lot of dedicated 
like hatred. Like people yeah, who don't true. like EA. Like, well, here's just... the thing. So now more and more games are moving to like a uh, open betas, essentially, mm-hmm. which gives you a better access to hands on with games than going to a show floor. So. If that's the direction things are going, and EA seems to have been doing a lot of that, like uh, they did Plants vs. Zombies, right, mm-hmm. uh, just recently. So that's better way to well, get your game to the masses than a convention the, floor. The, and again, so I, I agree with what you're saying, but in principle, E3 is supposed to be a business show. It's not supposed to be a consumer show. So it's supposed to be showing their games to the press and to other people in the video game industry, not to the public at large. Well, now press just get review codes. Uh, yeah, and then that's that's true as well. But this is more for like hype early on, uh-huh. you know, leading up to that before they can distribute codes and really have that kind of thing. Now that the kind da- of access. The real downside, though, is if exactly if you're talking to the press, is you no longer have the show floor interview with the developer. If anybody likes those, I mean, mm-hmm. a lot of times it's like, hey, yeah, so the game is going to be great. Yeah, yeah. No. What? <laughs> uh, so those interviews will be gone if you were even going to have them because EA is so big that mm-hmm. chances of a developer getting to go are probably much smaller, except so, for whatever's on the floor. See, I think now what it'll do is it'll just split time for press and for whoever's there. It's like, okay, well, they're going to have to they're going to have to dedicate time to go to the Club Nokia as well to talk to EA and to see the EA stuff in addition to just being at the event. Mm. Do you think they'll be real dicks and like schedule it at the same time as somebody else's? Yes. No way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they they I don't think I've ever seen two pressers go head to head at the same time. No, that's I mean that's only if you think you can outweigh their audience, but even then, you're still cutting your own. Like, yeah. there's going to be people who are going to watch the other one. Well, it'll it, fill up either way. And it seems yeah. like, for the most part, people are, or developers and publishers are deferential to Microsoft and Sony. It's like everyone lets them go first, and then the publisher yeah. uh, pressers uh, are later, are in the following days after that. So I, I don't know if that's like a contractual thing where... Microsoft and Sony get to do all the big announcements, and then the publishers follow up with details uh, over the mm-hmm. coming days. It seems like that's always They're the way it is go anyway. Head to head again. Well, I mean, the platforms are where most of those publishers' titles will be sold. So, right. Have yeah. either of you ever been to E three? No. No. We should go this year. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not inviting. You. I'm just telling you. You Son should go. <laughs> I mean, you should go. <laughs> you, Have fun. You, you gonna make that call? You wanna? Oh. Because this lady you looking at me for? It sounds like work. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm going. going. I'm gonna, you yeah. Go. I don't already got my registration code. I'm set. <laughs> I'm what is it this year? Oh fuck if I know. E3. Oh, it sounds he's, like you ain't going chair. either. <laughs> I don't have to book it yet. <laughs> oh, so that's interesting. It's June 14th to 16th is the show. And I think the thing we just read said June 12th to 14th is the EA thing. So wow, yeah, June so 12th to 14th early. is EA. And then June 14th to 16th is E3. Oh, so EA plays well, before it? Right. Well, that's oh. most of the pressers are all before the show, right? Right. But they're doing all their demo. Their club, like, it's a three-day thing. Yeah. They're doing it all before. The 14th is the only overlap date between them. Yeah. But uh, aren't all of them usually the right pressers before? are? But this is like a new event that they're doing. Oh, it's okay. a, yeah, a yeah. three day event. So yeah, that's weird. I guess maybe that's to avoid. They like know I, what they're like doing. They don't want to try to force the press to split and choose, and then they have one day of overlap uh, mm-hmm. there at the very end. It's but, fair enough. Yeah, it's good. All right, so it should be so, interesting. I, I wonder how you know long term if this is successful for them. It makes me think that we may start to see other publishers do that. And I mean, it may eventually lead to. E3 going away, and then down the road, people just wondering, why do we all get together at the same time this year and do this shit? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's going to be rough on... I mean, E3 was convenience, right, for the press. That's the main thing, is if you start fragmenting it into all these smaller shows, then it's just driving all over town. Right. I wonder how much muscle E3 has to try to stop EA from doing that and to try to keep them you know, in the fold. Because E3 is run by the ESA, isn't it? And isn't like I would assume EA is part of the ESA. It's like how does that relationship work between all these different organizations? I'm also curious with as exclusive as show floor access has become for those kind of shows. Like, how, what's the the price difference in doing your own show altogether versus buying that booth on the floor? Oh yeah, that's oh a, wow, that's a yeah. good question. I'm sure it's really expensive. Normally, you go to a show and you know floor space is expensive, electricity, mm-hmm. internet. I mean, everything is you know really expensive to put on building all those custom exhibits. If you could just get the whole venue yourself, yeah, it might be cheaper. Well, I mean, they still have to build all that stuff. Uh, you don't want to show up to an empty <laughs> theater. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, 70, 80,000? What's, what's floor space on E3 going for? For three days. Oh, fuck if I know. I mean, it's got to be up there, right? I'm sure. I'm sure it's probably... I mean, so these spaces are huge, too. Yeah. So I'm sure 
it's more than eighty thousand dollars. You think it's like, more than eighty thousand? Uh, if it's a if it's a sizable space, sure, yeah. Oh, and Club Nokia apparently is right by the Staples Center. Uh, yeah, it's it's located at LA Live, so it's right it's right by where E three will be held. Like walking distance? Yeah, walking distance. I'm, I'm trying to pull up. A, no, not so. E- so EA itself has like enough stuff going on to fill up a center for three days. Well, I mean, if I you guess. go back far enough, EA owns like half of everything at this point. That's it's, why everybody hates wow. them because they buy it all up. Yeah. It's yeah. I mean, it's maybe two blocks away from the convention center. It's literally right across the street from the Staples Center, which is between. And you just walk from yeah. EA Play to E3. Club, yeah. Do <laughs> you have to get a separate day. ticket for EA Play? Uh, yeah, I I'm sure. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wonder how how hard that will be to get. You know, it will, yeah, it might, maybe it'll be by it'll probably be by invite initially to people mm-hmm. on in the press, and then they may open it up. I assume if they're doing something like this, it's because they want to open it up to the public, so it may be easier for the public to get into it. I think it said that in the article that they want people uh-huh. to have more hands-on time, and they aren't getting it at E3. Well, yeah, again, if That's you have your entire play. space, you can fill it with demo stations as opposed to having just a small booth. Yeah. So that helps fix that situation of tiny percentage of people actually be able to use your stuff. We all know about tiny percentages. Tiny percentages. Um, the other thing I was interested in, I, I think I read about this on the plane when I was coming back, was Mighty Number no. 9 uh, being delayed. Delayed. Yeah, uh, again. <laughs> again. So they're coming up on a year's delay. I think they were supposed to be on April of last year. Yeah, they were expect, initially expected April 2015. And now the they're shifted to spring 2016, so essentially uh, a year late. And I mean, what's what looks worse for a game though, coming out a year late or releasing a game and then it not working correctly? I, like, I just don't know which one's worse. I'm glad you point. said that. I think releasing a broken game is way worse. Yeah, you know, I would much rather see them delay and, and I mean, get it right. A year is a long time. <laughs> a year is a long time. I think the latest delay. I'm going off the top of my head. I think the latest mm-hmm. delay they said that. Um, the networking code was a lot more complex than they thought, trying to uh, get it adapted for all the different platforms that they're releasing on. And so that, 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 is, make, that is taking longer than they expected. Wow. We'll just put it out on one. Whichever yeah. one works, put yeah, it but out. Then, but then that's like playing favorites. If you put that out, if you put it out on one, the people on the other ones are going to be fucking pissed off. Well, it's not playing favorites if you're like, this is the one also, that works right now. Also, it cuts a third of your profit. I mean, if you only go to like either PC, Xbox, or Well, I mean, know, it's not that you're not going to. It's like that's if true, it works like, on this one, put it out on that one. Especially that'll start making the people who have you know crowdfunded it because it, it's been a long time, but it was actually a crowdfunded title. You can start delivering on some of those. Oh, and I, I'm 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 double checking my facts here, and I was right that uh, they they have pointed to the large number of platforms, the networking code, uh, but they did mention something else here. I didn't I didn't remember. I guess that you know they're using Unreal Engine three. For wow, the they game. haven't even updated oh. four yet. Yeah, and uh, Unreal Engine three is no longer being updated. <laughs> so oh, they, they've run into to problems with with that as well. So spring 2016, I, like I said, I'd much rather they delay and get it right mm-hmm. than uh, put something out early. Like, for example, um, <laughs> the recent kerfuffle with Five Nights at Freddy. Oh, oh God. wow. Yeah. So for, when they first announced this game, apparently it, people exploded over how excited they were. Yeah. I mean, personally, well, I, lo- I looked at it and I was like, but it's not. Like, it's not Five Nights at Freddy's. People, what people loved about that is the the jump scares and then watching mm-hmm. people get scared by it. I mean, that was the appeal of that and the whole story that was, like, hidden in there. But then this game comes out and it's 100% different. Like, as far as I can tell, there aren't any jump scares in it. And it's like a turn-based RPG where you level up your characters and then the overworld is like that weird 2D animation thing mm-hmm. that you see in the Five mm-hmm. Nights games, like between levels. That's the whole overworld. And you just fight different animatronics and collect them and Look, stuff. You, you hook them with the world and then you can sell them anything. It's so, it's such a bizarre turn to me. Like, and when I first saw it, because Scott Cawthon, who makes them, mm-hmm. he's really big into hiding story mm-hmm. elements in his games. So I thought th- there must be something behind it. Like this tells some of the story from the other games in a weird way like there's some secret behind it not that i've seen and then the game turned out to be really bad apparently and you got taken down so bad that it was pulled from steam completely. well i mean the 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 game did have very positive ratings on steam you know overall, not positive enough considered. apparently that's that's the thing it wasn't positive enough for scott scott felt disappointed by it so he wasn't it 87 percent yeah yeah so they he offered up from what I can tell he offered up refunds pulled the game from Steam and they're gonna he's also gonna release it via a different platform next game time game right? jolt yeah game jolt which 
I don't know what Game Jolt is. It's uh, just a you can download free indie games on it. That's it. Okay. Yeah, that, Wait, I mean that's so really it. He's gonna no longer release on Steam. No, it's he's gonna release it on Game Jolt, so it'll be free for everyone once he's but done more work Steam's on it. Steam's already. You can have free games on Steam. I don't know why he said he's and changing. Maybe the there's a background something that uh that does look awful bad. Yeah, like this. I saw this and I was like, nope. Uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> And I didn't play it. I mean, I, I like the Five Nights series of this game. I just, I, I wasn't, you know, psyched for this one. But, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, I'm, it, I'm sure if you put it out, and it has 87% ratings, it had to have been fine. People who like that type of it. game yeah. like it. Like, yeah. but he himself was not happy with it. I mean, he forayed into a different area than his normal, his previous game releases. So, anytime you do something new, people are going to not like part of it. Yeah. And I'm sure he's been making, you know, I'm sure he wanted to make something a little different, you know, after going with the, the Five Nights series for, you know, a couple of iterations. Uh, you know, I'm sure creatively he wanted to take it in a slightly different direction. So I can't, I mean, you can't fault him for that. No. But. So, yeah, I, I guess he, like you said, maybe he's his own hardest critic. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's trying to make. I mean, 87 is still a solid B. Yeah. Though, for those other altered scales, it's still a low B. You always talk about these altered scales. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, no, my school was like seven point ranges. Oh, huh. yeah. Interesting. What does that mean? <laughs> so you had to make a 93 to make an A. And a 92 Why? is a B. That makes no sense. No one else has heard of this. Because it's a higher standard, okay? <laughs> I don't know. It's because they hated us. <laughs> In sevens. The divine number. That's what all the grades are. You know, it was like, well, eight would be too much, I guess. That's too much like the the normies with ten point ranges. <laughs> the normies. Well, that at least makes sense. Every, everyone is used to ten. I don't know what the seven shit is. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of video games. All right, good. Segue, segue. segue. I like it. Uh, speaking of video games, were we Overwatch? We were talking about Five Nights before oh, we yeah. talking about your stupid uh, seven point system. Uh, Overwatch closed beta is coming back in mid February, which I'm excited for because I still haven't played this fucking game. Oh, so you didn't play it at all? No. I haven't played it at all either. I didn't get it either. I didn't get into the beta <laughs> right. of the last round, so I'm hoping I can get into it this time. We had it on the stream, right? When we that because that came out at the same time we were doing the charity stream. Yeah, I don't remember much about that. In the, Fun well, House, yeah, I bet you Fun don't House remember a lot of that. <laughs> Fun but, House loves it, mm-hmm. and they all play it constantly. Yeah, so it's been right, offline yeah. since you know I think all of this year, right? It was like right around the end of 2015 they took it offline. Yep. Uh, I guess to rework some of some of the game and they're launching it. And they're supposed to launch it officially this year, right? Didn't they announce that at BlizzCon? I think they announced that they're going to do. It's going to be what, like a forty dollars game? It's coming on plat on consoles as well as PC. Oh, here it is. Uh, Close beta. Plan to release the game on PS4, Windows PC, Xbox One this spring. Wow. So, so I mean, soon. Yeah, this getting, will be a final beta then. This, yeah, this is probably a final beta um, because yeah, this spring. That means that means by March. You heard it right. first. By March? March oh. 21st. Oh, wait. This spring. That's winter. This spring. It could be March, April. <laughs> April March, is still yeah, spring. Yeah. March, April. May. May. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So May, then. So most likely Anytime May. they say it's spring, it's the last possible minute. Probably spring. if they haven't given a release date yet. Or they push it back. Well, then they say spring, and they could aim for March, but then be like, no, it was... That's how spring. it usually goes. If yeah. you give me a spring. season, you, I know you're full of shit. <laughs> <Give me> a- <laughs> yeah. That's not happening. What about quarters? Same thing. Uh, quarter quarters are, are almost worse than seasons. <laughs> quarter two. What's quarter? Because yeah, they know matter. That, yeah, your average audience is like, huh? Sure. Yeah. Okay. What? What's one fourth? I mean, I could look that up. Is that a C? I don't know. What? Uh, hmm, yeah. Whatever. That's a business <laughs> thing. Business <laughs> nonsense. You're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Ryan, breaking it down there. You should be. You should be like on investor conference calls. Uh, Month. You're getting closer. It'll be out March. Okay. March 29th, 30th, sure. When do you think, okay, so speaking of release dates, when do you think we'll begin to see, like, a narrow down, even a year for Star Citizen? Do you think, how long, how far off do you think that is? Ah, uh, come on, they did the mocap, they just released that whole thing with Jillian Anderson, who I guess is in it now. There she is, wow. Oh, was, that wow, was that was really fast. Oh, I don't know when it's coming out. I, I gotta say... <laughs> I don't. I don't know that I like Jillian Anderson's acting and the little snippets you get out of this. Well, you don't know. This is this is motion capture. It's the bits they use. She's still talking though. They could. They're probably redoing VO later. 
This is probably just performance capture for lip sync, and then they redo the. Look, the they got the whole face rig on. Right, they're doing the performance capture, and it'll do VO yeah. later. Yeah. All right, well, the voice is part of your performance. They'll redo it to yeah, be they're better. Really they're like, you know what? Just move your face right, like, but what you say doesn't. This matter. would be great if she, her face acting That's is not. this, like, oh no, get to the ship, and then the voice acting is like, oh no, get to the ship. The two are related. Yeah, they're related, but they can make it better. They can fix it. It's just placeholder. Ryan's not. He's he's out. Also, you don't know that they've got her in full mocap rigs. You don't know that it's a final take. That could be a, a scrap. Take. That's what it is. They're I like, we're gonna put this take. out, but that's take number like thirteen. Hey, apparently, anyone that's watched the uh, X Files season whatever, we're on ten. The the return says acting was very wooden. Oh, oh shit. So I have not maybe seen. Maybe that's yet. just what you get from Jillian Anderson now. Hey, Ryan is just. I'm sorry, Jillian mood. Anderson. I love you. R Jillian Anderson, I think, was like my first teenage crush, like watching someone on television. Had the hardest Man, teenage. Really? Because that was hardest, back in the days of like shoulder pads that were up to here. Had the hardest teenage boner for her. <laughs> Ryan watched her on TV and was like, not impressed. <laughs> get oh, no, your, get like, your acting together. She was hella cute. No, I was. She, she was. She did it for me back in X Files days. <laughs> she sure. Did it for me. Uh, I'm trying to look here. Uh, I'm looking at trying to look up some details on Star Citizen. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to see if they have a release date. They don't even have no, uh, a release it. year nailed down yet. Hey, they gave you pieces of it. I gave them pieces of my wallet. <laughs> I'm gonna say quarter two next year. Gus, I, I, I would say holiday 2017. Right? Whoa. It's like if you're gonna, if wow. I, I'm, I'm gonna say that they'll <laughs> they'll say a year, like we talked about earlier. Uh -huh. They'll say 2017. And we know it'll be like the last possible holiday moment. Holiday, I, I, I'm holiday is officially holiday. worse than season. I'm betting November 2017. Is it worse than quarter? Is holiday oh, worse yeah. than quarter? Holiday is like the worst because that's not even <laughs> specifying a holiday. That could be fucking Fourth of July for all you know. That's true. It'll come out That'd sometime the best around way to the day off. Holiday 2017, and then just drop it on like. Columbus Veterans Day. Day. <laughs> <laughs> well, Veterans Day would still be like in November, you know? It would still be oh, close enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Again, I guess Columbus Day would be October. Happy Martin Luther <laughs> King Day, everybody! Star Citizen! <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm huge. I can't, I'm a huge fan of Star Citizen. I'm really How excited about How do you know? You haven't played it yet. <laughs> I've played some of the modules. I'm a fan <laughs> of the idea. Uh, and I'm really excited for it to come out, but... I'm, I'm still worried that it's going to be. A, it's, I'm worried it's very far off. Here's what you do: invest just another couple hundred dollars. Maybe it'll help. In There's the, another ship out there, right? Yeah, I'm sure there is. It'll be like uh, I'll help buy that extra pack of Doritos that'll like fuel a breakthrough. You'll be like, oh, we could make this a lot easier. We can we could ship this tomorrow. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> so <laughs> that'll that's, help it out. That's, it's interesting to me because. So you look at, you know, this, obviously this Star Citizen, everyone knows Star Citizen was crowdfunded. Mighty Number no. 9 was also. And mm -hmm. you look at the differences, how people are responding to delays and expectations. You know, everyone's really upset about Mighty Number no. 9 being delayed. And I, I think there is a small number of people being upset about Star Citizen not having any information. But for the most part, it's like, yeah, you just make the game. Don't worry about it. I wonder what the difference is between, like, I wonder if there's different appetites within, like, different genres of, uh, of games that are being developed via crowdfunding. There's kind delays. of a weird, probably, right? Yeah. There's kind of a weird thing about crowdfunding that works against itself in that the more successful it is, the more options in the game you unlock, which makes it harder and longer to develop. Mm -hmm. Wasn't Mighty Number no. 9 originally just going to be a single platform? Probably. It was probably a stretch goal. I think, I think the multi platform was a stretch goal, which has now set the game back. That's true, yeah. So they raised more money to hit that threshold because more people were interested, and that cost everybody to get the game late. There it is. Uh, it's a Kickstarter. Well, screw those people. Screw those people. Paid too much money. Don't like the game too much. That's what you got to do. You you got to slow roll the Kickstarter, right? You got to be like, uh, I think that's the right number of features. Yeah. I so don't think I want to fund you. If to I go, go on a Kickstarter and I see they've hit their goal, even if they have it on the stretch goal, I'll be like, mm -mm. I'll play it. Yeah, just wait. I yeah. So nothing, uh, their initial goal was nine hundred thousand dollars on Kickstarter. They Which ended up is really low. They ended up raising three point eight million dollars on Kickstarter. Okay, so a bit above it. Yeah. yeah. Independent of like any PayPal donations, uh, which happened after, after the fact. And their stretch goals included, what is this? It's hard to tell the way the graphics are. Mm -hmm. I think it's at one point three five million dollars Mac and Linux versions. Uh, oh, it's always the Mac and Linux version. Two point two. That's what messed it up. Two point two million dollars PS3, three hundred and sixty, Wii U versions. Oh, not even the new console. That's how old this is. Yeah. Three point three million dollars was PS4, Xbox One versions. $3.5 million was Vita 3DS versions. <laughs> so yeah, you're right. As they added more money, it's just like work, work, work. They're like, work. oh, fuck. 
<laughs> That's what I'm saying. Just push out something. Why don't, we put the veto on get here? A plus. Yeah, really. <laughs> four million was, and then that's independent of these other goals. Yeah. So like four million dollars, which they claim was reached, and they must be adding the PayPal uh, amount in here, was online battle race mode. So again, there's an online version. There's the network code. So yeah, that's the network code, which they also mentioned. Uh, at the two point seven five million dollars, beck and call online co-op challenge mode. Online co-op. I mean, that's <laughs> more networking in there. Release it in chunks, all right? Just put the game out if it's or a multiplayer. Or just be like 2.2 million, you get a new new character yeah. skin. There you go. I mean, uh, well, there's already been examples of people that have kind of done it. Like, Broken Age did it in two parts. But people uh, were not happy about people that. People were very people not happy were about very that. very pissed off about that. Which, yeah, I mean, they kind of had a reason to complain. But, uh, I mean, Star Citizen has the same problem where they, one of the stretch goals, I think, was what? Landing on planets, right? It was originally just going to be space, and now mm -hmm. you can actually land on planets. How much more development That's has that been? That's quite a bit more. Yeah, I mean that that ex that alone probably extended the development cycle by, by like a year. God. I'm I'm looking theirs up now. Yeah, like, and this of course was really old. When was this? April 2013. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, and they got less on Kickstarter than Mighty Number no. Nine did. They got 2.1 million dollars. Out of a five hundred thousand dollar ass, and then kept getting it. They just kept going. Yeah, I mean, I can't even. You can't even really look at the, yeah. this because they earned so much more money. Oops. Careful. Uh, <laughs> the whole set the collapses <laughs> on other platforms and and other, you know, other other avenues. Mm -hmm. This doesn't even have like all of their real stretch goals. So basically, being that successful, I don't, I don't know that it's been. You know what they should do is on the stretch goals, they should also include a delta in development time. That's a really good idea. Yeah. But they're not going to do it because that will scare people off of trying to reach those stretch goals. It's like, oh, oh but it's going to take I don't want year. it that much later. Yeah. yeah. Like, I would rather have this now or, you know, maybe just have the stretch goals be modules or, that are added on as DLC or Or maybe they like could that. just be, you know, more clear in the wording. And maybe we're at that point where people are starting to understand that as these features are added in, that does, you know, lengthen and increase mm -hmm. your development time. Yeah. You know, I think... This whole issue of crowdfunding video games has helped maybe teach gamers a lot about how games are made and what it takes. And, you know, maybe as time goes on, people will be more understandable and realize, oh, yeah, adding features adds time. Yeah. Well, I, what they've got working against them, too, is you've got games like Call of Duty where they crank one out every year. But they crank it out every year because there's a team of three different developers now that are working multiple years to deliver that yearly experience. Right, you don't see that. Well, what about Assassin's Creed? Assassin's yeah. Creed cranks them out every year and mm -hmm. stuff like that. There was yeah. a rumor. Those don't always work. <laughs> and yeah, there's a, where, there, we talked about this in the patch a few weeks ago, there's a rumor that they're gonna skip the next, this coming year's Assassin's Creed and they're gonna move to like a two year cycle. Well, there is supposed to be an Assassin's Creed coming out this year though, but it's like a remaster of something. It's like, like cause, uh, but it's a rumor because I think they saw a domain got taken out that was like Assassin's Creed mm -hmm. Remastered, or even just something along those lines, uh -huh. and they think that they might be re-releasing like the Ezio trilogy, mm -hmm. uh, upscale. Maybe as a like upscale as a single package. So yeah, mm -hmm. I found the um, the stretch goals for Star Citizen. Oh, yeah. uh oh, I can't even look at this. What do you mean? <laughs> look how long you scroll. I Oh god! Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! Well, they kept adding them, right? Right. They're, I mean, they're up to like sixty-five million dollars oh, now. Just cap it. Just be like, <laughs> that's it. I mean, and you look at it; it's getting ridiculous. Sixty-four million dollars, pets. Well, seriously? Your pets got added in. Fuck it. That's why we can never have this game. <laughs> pets. Because <laughs> you want your goddamn dog in it. Stop adding goals. What are, what are we looking at? Oh, that's, oh, no, that's, that's something else. Got it. I thought you'd pull up the thing. No, I, I, I could send it there, but I don't want people to see my screen in case I have my oh, yeah, porn up or something. Fair enough. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I've got here. Oh, there it is. They're going to scroll. Go. So it starts oh, yeah, off innocently it. enough, and then it's just like, oh my god. There you go. There you go. Almost. No. Nope. Got more yeah, Five million. Going. <laughs> Four. Look at the, the circles filling yeah. up as you go down. Like, yeah, did it. Did it. Making that too. So this god damn it. Every entry here is something that added development time. Every single one. God, look at those numbers! 24 million, 26... Because, I, I mean, that doesn't... Like, the $2 million difference doesn't mean that you hire $2 million worth there's, of additional team to make that feature happen. It is literally every million dollars there's another stretch goal. Yeah. Yeah, if you're at the... So, they're still, while they're still scrolling through that, I'm going to read something that I see here. <laughs> like, at the very top of it, who has their latest stats. Yeah. Uh, funds raised just under $107 million. Is. $107 million. They're at $106,797,617. And they have had one, almost 1 1.2 million people donate 
to that campaign. Um, let, let's, uh, let's do a little math and see what the average donation is. Uh, 617 divided well, by... Oops. Roughly 100 bucks. Yeah, <laughs> somewhere there. Is it? 1.18. One well, it's one to... You got 100 and you got a one point something, so... Uh, $90.22 is yeah. the average uh, donation per person. Which bad. you're skewing the average. I'm but skewing the average. People, but if you think about like you, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, it's like, so you could buy a game, right? Like, let's say eventually in five years when Star Citizen is out, <laughs> you can. Five look, years, calling it now. <laughs> Hol holiday 2030. <laughs> Whenever the game's finally out. <laughs> We're going to be on the, Mars before the fucking game releases. <laughs> Theoretically, you should be able to buy this game for $60 when it's all said and done. Yeah. So that's good. They have sold almost 1.2 million copies at 50% above what they should have sold this game for at retail. Yeah. That's a good business model. Well, yes and no. I mean, that doesn't take into account that people are getting things with those packages that they could be microtransaction later. And, right, and then they can, yeah, they're gonna, yeah. They can sell those back theoretically. So they may still have paid that additional 30 to get your crazy ship that you're going to fly by yourself. I'm going to have so much fun. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I mean that's that's really good, and you can see. I guess they have a, like different breakdowns and graphs here for like months. Weekly, Do they have day, a percentage hourly. completed graph? Because that would be nice <laughs> for each of the little uh, uh, yeah stretch goals. Yeah, they'll those went up to a hundred. Oh all yeah, done. we completed down, collecting the money. There's definitely some developers going through that like. Every time the thing filled up, he's like, "God damn it!" You think so? He, he goes to his Twitter every night, like, "Please, just don't. I don't. I don't want to be here anymore." Stop like, it. Hey, at what point are they just like, "Stop giving us money"? Well, they stopped stretch goals, right? I mean, sixty-five million was the last one we saw there. And well, now, when you, you look, close it out with pets, I mean, well, th there was one more. You'll the go bottom off of the barrel. There. Yeah. Well, pets. Pet, was, pets spaceship was, pets. Pets. <laughs> pets. Spaceships. Your spaceship can have a pet spaceship. <laughs> um, the last. Can I put the pet in the airlock and just fire it out into space? Because that'd be amazing. <laughs> Even if it, especially if it was a kitten, right? Yeah. Um, the last one was enhanced ship modularity. All right. Well, that's what I was hoping. Now it's for, a Lego. So. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, so I guess it's more modules, more. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, and they even say this new goal: a massive undertaking. <laughs> so. <laughs> no. Stop. <laughs> no, no light undertaking. Pick Very a game and make that small game. Small undertaking. So yeah. I guess yeah they. Uh, they allow for modular components to be available as swap outs on ships. No wonder they can't ever put together a timeline for the game development cycle. They don't know what game they're making until $65 million later. It seems like it is a universe simulator, essentially. Like, they're going to build actual space travel in the simulation, figure it all out. It's like, oh, we're gonna, we need modules. Like, they need, like, they need to design <laughs> real working spaceships. They're like, well, yeah, we can't program this in the game until scientists figure it out, so we got forever to wait. <laughs> Why don't we just build one? Let's just build a ship. And we can do that before they can finish the game, right? I mean, it's Possible. starting to get to that. Just crowdfund it, but yeah. like every million dollars, just be just add another thing to there the There we spaceship. go, yeah. Oh, it needs another fin. Like, damn it. <laughs> another $5 million will put a second engine in we'll it. Put a, we'll put a stripe. <laughs> so that we can take pets. According to, uh, what is this, Peter Hayes F1 on Twitter, rumors suggest it will indeed be released pre the end of time. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so we will get it before the world ends. There you go. Oh, yeah. I mean, you never know when that's coming, though. Like that's it true. could be tomorrow, and we could fly to another world by then. Yeah. It, it, I mean, an asteroid any second now. Just so some guy, and I'm, I'm going through Twitter right now. <laughs> some guy who codes is his Twitter handle. Uh, said, I guess he's showing me um, a screenshot of the of a retailer's release date for Overwatch, and it says June 21st because. That is the first day of summer. Since they oh. said spring, uh, so he so would it be June twentieth, right? So he's yeah, try, yeah. he's trying to say he's confirming the uh, release date by showing a screenshot of the first day of summer. Perfect. I'm sure that's what they do. They do that so that yeah, they're over promising. You know, it's like if it comes out before then during spring, it's like oh, it came out early. I mean, does GameStop need to know though? They've got. I think they want their customers to know, and they, I don't think I don't know that this is GameStop. This this doesn't have the retail in cuts. it. Well, I mean, like really, like <laughs> do. Uh, retail stores kind of should have a heads up on that sort of thing, right? Because some games could actually yeah. cause, yeah, promotional things. You got to get their little flyers out for you know the people that still use retail stores. Yeah, they, they probably need to like put it in their inventory management system and whatnot. That way, they know when they're selling it, when it's coming in, things like that. Do you think retail stores get really pissed off at games companies constantly pushing their dates around? No, because they can just. I think. It, I, I think they, they love it yeah? because. They can just pre-order even longer, get people's money. People forget about the pre-order. Then it's just free money that they have. 
You think that happens? Like people I, I will forget that they pre-ordered that a game. Happens. Yeah, or they lose the receipt, or they don't remember where they pre-ordered it. Especially if a game gets pushed long enough, then that's just money that they have for nothing. I never even considered that. I like pre-ordering it, a game, then forgetting about it. It's like it. a. It's like the, it's kind of like a gift card. You forget you have the gift card. That is, you that's lose a it. Fact, I think. Same. Thing. I don't think it works that way though. I think if you pre-order a game, then that game, then you have a copy that is earmarked and it is removed from inventory. Right. For initially at launch, yeah. and then they'll put it out if you don't c- collect it in the first like two days. Typically, that's. I the think way that's it works. the games that show up in the bargain bin like twenty years later. Mm. Somebody found it in the back office and like fuck it, sell it for five. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for uh, who is this proof puppet? Uh, just tweeted. Just imagine Star Citizen two. Oh, can't wait. Can't wait. We'll eventually Until after too. the end of time for that one. All right. Well, it's about time to wrap this up. I don't know what happened to that. That's it. We've, been, we've definitely been on an hour. So it's almost gone. It's close. It's pretty gone. All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Hopefully, I'll have played some more video games, and I can actually talk about them at that point. So, bye. Bye. Bye.